All right, so <clears throat> I literally just posted about how uh, I had a boatload of stuff to do today and I didn't know if I was gonna get uh, any content out, but then I realized I, I can do that. Um, I, I can uh, do a quick uh, video here doing some order prep. So I've got mealworms here, I've got superworms just a little bit out of view, um, and what I'm gonna do is prep those now. Uh, one thing I want to address, I don't have a mask on right now. I've got both of my doors open, I've got a good cross breeze, and I'm not gonna be doing this for very long. So um, anytime we're in here with like a closed door scenario or we're doing a lot of work with these guys, we're always gonna wear that full face respirator. Uh, so let's get started. Um, what I need to do is, these guys were harvested recently um, and all I'm gonna do is scoop out some of the pupa, some of the dead. Um, Mother Nature does its thing and every now and then we get some dead mealworms. That's just part of raising animals. Raising insects here. And I'm just gonna go through and kind of pick out those dead ones. And what you'll notice is I'm getting quite a few live ones as well. Not a problem because I'm doing this quickly um, to, to save on time. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll use these that I collect to start a pupa bin or add these to an existing pupa bin so that we can keep our colony going. So uh, that's serving two purposes there. Uh, both from a time perspective and um, we get some uh, extra mealworms for pupation. Uh, I do need a sifter. Right? That. Ben was using this yesterday to do some uh, harvesting. And I'm going to pour these guys in. This is a 130th mesh. Uh, let's the frass through. Um, and that's all that's in here. These guys ate everything I gave them overnight. So all that's left in here is frass. I saw a couple pupa that I just want to pull out. I'm just going to shake that. It's going to go down a little bit. I've got my cross freeze, so I'm going to move out of the way here, and I'm going to just let that frass particulate go that way. Uh, I am very allergic to this stuff, and so what I've been doing is testing in the new facility, testing this crosswind option um, so that I can uh, do things quickly like this uh, without... Uh, making a big production out of it. So we'll let those guys go. Found me a beetle here. Put those in some pupa. All right. So we're going to make a uh, born feeds order for Columbia. Uh, I get 10 of these every time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. All I'm going to do. A little bit more working space here. Love this new table. I built this yesterday. Ben tested it out. Uh, it's fully mobile, so we're able to put this wherever we need it. So I'm just going to do a quick fill here. Make sure I get a pretty equivalent amount within a few grams. And sometimes folks will say to me, you know what, why are you worried about getting it down to that level? You know, a little bit extra isn't a big deal. So I already put extra in and I've actually had people get frustrated when they get more in one order and then less the next time. So I might put in, you know, these are 500 count cups. Uh, if I put in, let's say 750 people, I would think people would be excited about that, but then the next time they come and pick one up and it gets the 600, the 500 um, plus 10 to 20% extra, um, then they're wondering, well, wait a second, what happened to that extra? So I do try to keep it within um, the same quantities just to keep things consistent so you know exactly what you're getting. I do the same thing with orders that I ship. Um, so that folks are, are getting exactly what they need. There are other people that will, um, especially the folks that are buying it uh, from my website, they will buy a certain quantity um, because they're gonna raise me arms and they only have so much space for their trays, right? Um, and so if I sent them more, uh, it might actually be, that be detrimental to them. So I like to keep things consistent. So the experience is Pretty similar each time. All right, so these guys are done. 
Now I'm going to do, uh, I got a new account in Ashland. And I'm going to drop off mealworms and superworms. Uh, I made some mess there. I'll vacuum that up. Uh, so they're wanting a hundred count. They're a, a bait shop. Um, so they don't need as large quantities. So I got to do the math in my head real quick. Um, uh, it's too early for math. And actually, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something here. So for a bait shop, they're gonna want larger ones. So what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do a quick sift with. Oh, this guy here. Quick sift with the one eight inch mesh to see if I can get a bigger average. So I sell medium mealworms. And what that means is they go through a um, mesh that uh, is about an eighth of an inch and then a, a mesh that's smaller. So that way we try to get a more uniform size, but nothing's perfect. Um, and so we do get a mixture. And what I'm trying to do now, you can see them falling through. Trying to let's try to separate get some larger ones. If I can't do that, see how that goes. Okay. This guy here. So fall through on their own passively. This guy underneath. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit larger. I think that'll that'll work. Oh, I'm going to try the 8 ounce cups. Um, Alright, I'm going to need to go to um, the old farm and try to find the 8 ounce cups if I've got some laying around. So, temporary pause. Alright, so... Had a quick combo with Ben on the plans for today. We are all set. I've got the 100 counts mealworms. And now it's time to do all the supers. So we got a handy sifter here. 3D printed that, uh, designed it, printed it. Works really well. I need to get my 3D printer working so I can get more of these. I'm just going to get these potato chunks off to the side. Ooh, this part of a banana. You take that one, I'm going to use this one. Super ones every time because they change in size. Once you make it, you make it. One, two, three, All right.
always give a little extra. Oops. Not too much. Alright. So these five are done. Big shop. And I'm using the larger cups here, uh, for the, <coughs> the born feed cups, because they put, uh, they want wheat bran in with theirs. For this year, I'm not going to want the wheat bran in there to mess with. Just like that, we should have the rest of the meat. Oh, I switched that. Announces the greens. That would not have worked. Okay, let's see what's going on. Leave that battery. Alright, so now we need brand for the boy feed cups. Some of that right in there. Pretty quick and easy. And same thing for the mealworms for born feed. I'm putting wheat brain in there. Because a lot of the folks that come there are buying them for their bluebirds, buying them for their reptiles, so the mealworms need a little, little bit to snack on. As opposed to the fishermen, they're going to not want to be digging through the wheat brand to get those mealworms out. Alright, super simple. Alright, so now we're going to throw lids on everything. Are nice because they're rated for dropping from five or six feet and still holding things in. They're actually meant for a vending machine, a bait vending machine. They're nice and sturdy. Also recyclable. I also do take them as returns, so if you're buying these locally and you bring, bring back these cups, I'll do a quick clean out and reuse them. Forms here. But I wait. Hmm.
my OCD kicking in. I'm putting the Fabrical logo at the top. That's what these are. These are Fabrical. And then I can put the label on there. And it needs to go. No reason I couldn't do it. I mean, they're circles. The, the uh, holes there are all punched in a similar pattern. It's just me needing to do that. I want everything to visually look the same. I want to be consistent. And voila. So, I'll do some cleanup here. Then I'm going to vacuum off each one of these cups. There's just a little bit of dust every now and then. Some of the chitin gets on there because it's real light. Just little flakes of it. So, I'll vacuum that off, clean the table off. These delivered today.